uh, welcome, and we're excited. You are here to hear about the Tableau Blueprint Hammer and Nails Edition. My name is Michael Cox. I'm a Solutions Director at Tableau. I'm based out of the Chicago area, so I don't know, anybody else here from Chicago area? All right, all right. You guys made it out, awesome. Um, yeah, so if you are on the East Coast and you tried to get here on Monday and your flight was delayed, that, that's probably on Chicago at this point. Um, it's, you know, the, the, the only place where uh, I was thinking about, could there be a more disappointing season than the 2019 Chicago Cubs season? And to which the 2019 Chicago Bears replied, hold my beer. So, uh, but anyway, but it's home. Uh, so believe it or not, this is my seventh TC. And uh, I, the first couple TCs, I, I sat where you sat. I was a Tableau customer and had the opportunity to be exposed to Tableau for the first time. And really, the first Tableau conference I went to, I was just sort of looking into Tableau. Our, our organization was trying to decide if that was the right uh, sort of thing for us, and I really wasn't sure. Just so you know, it's way more fun to come to Tableau conference as a customer than as an employee. So that's great. Good for you guys. Um, just a bit about my Tableau journey. I started out as a customer, as I mentioned. My background was in sort of data warehousing, data marts, uh, ETL, kind of getting all that stuff, all the behind the scenes things going. And when I first went to Tableau Conference, I, what I was amazed at was how the possibilities that I never knew were out there in terms of visual analytics. The things that you could do when you combine that back-end data stuff with the ability to do some really in, interesting analytics. And really, when I got back from that first conference, I was hooked. Uh, I knew that you know, Tableau was going to be a part of what I wanted to do uh, in my career going forward. So, I, I continued to work as a Tableau customer for a couple years, then actually joined Tableau a little over four years ago. Uh, at Tableau, I work in our professional services area, which means I basically get to work with a lot of customers. I get to go out and help them implement uh, everything from sort of technical server and integration issues to user engagement to adoption to desktop training and sort of everything in between. So I really get to see sort of a lot of the different aspects of what it takes to, to implement Tableau. Um, and really, that's kind of why Blueprint is something that I'm, I'm very passionate about and very interested in. Blueprint really is a lot of the things that we do in the field, the things that we try to do to, to make customers successful. And when we're talking about what does it take, why is Blueprint important, that's a big piece of it. Um, why is this called the Hammer and Nails Edition? Because this is not a Tableau Blueprint overview. This is really, uh, we're going to talk about some of the things that can happen when you actually take Tableau Blueprint and sort of get to the job site and start applying it in the real world. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the tactical stuff that happens when you kind of combine what's in Blueprint with what happens at, at sometimes in your own organization. So sometimes it's things you didn't anticipate. And uh, we've seen a lot of those. And so I'm going to hopefully give you some examples of some of the things that we've seen as well as how we're going to look at overcoming those. So this is not a Blueprint presentation, as I mentioned. It, there's uh, a lot of good resources online uh, about Blueprint. There's a lot of places you can get more information. There's just no way I could do Blueprint justice. So what I decided to do <laughs> was take all 195 pages of Blueprint and dis discern it into a seven-minute presentation. So you're going to miss a little of the nuance, let's just say, right? You're not going to get much of the detail. But hopefully, it'll give us all a good level set, right? We'll all at least have a basic idea of what we're talking about. If it's completely new to you, I would strongly encourage you to there's all kinds of places around the Tableau conference that you can get more information or certainly online as well. After the overview, I'm going to focus a little bit more on, on what I would call kind of the tactical considerations. One is where we're going to talk a little bit about context and the importance of understanding how to apply Blueprint into the context into which your situation is. Uh, we have a lot of customers with a lot of different um, backgrounds, a lot of different information backgrounds, IT backgrounds, business backgrounds, and so the context becomes really important the real world in which you're going to apply it. Then what I'm going to do is actually take some samples, some real life examples of things that we see pretty consistently out there in, as we've tried to implement Blueprint, and what are some of the things we have to work around? What are some of the, the, the issues that sometimes come up that makes it difficult to implement Blueprint? And then also talk, obviously, about some strategies um, to help, help overcome those. Most of the content of this comes from kind of real life stuff that we've done and you know, between me and my colleagues that we've seen out in the field, um, experiences that we've had, customer successes that we've been able to, to achieve um, and what that looks like. All right, but before we get started, I have a little secret about Tableau Blueprint. This is just between me, the people in this room, everybody watching in the live stream, everybody who's gonna, 
everybody's going to watch this on YouTube later. Uh, but but no, the secret about uh, Tableau Blueprint is that it's not new. So we unveiled Tableau Blueprint at TC Europe in uh, this summer, I think it was in June. Um, and, and in the sense that it's a, a new concept, a new way to, to package these things, this, it's true. What Tableau Blueprint did, though, the information within Tableau Blueprint has been around for a while. It's been floating around in different parts of the Tableau organization, different things we, that we've implemented, um, the, the sales organization and, and pre-sales and everybody kind of, on the, and, and post-sales and everybody has, has worked on different aspects of that. But what we've done now with Blueprint is taken all of that information, all of that knowledge, all of those best practices, put them together in one framework and sort of canonized it and sort of given everyone both internal and external, a, a way that we can kind of talk about these things in a common vocabulary. So one of the reasons it's very exciting is because now we, we have a, a common vocabulary that we can talk about when we talk about how do we become successful with implementing Tableau. Blueprint has really given us that. But at its core, a lot of the content is actually not really new, per se. Those things have been around for a while. Um, so I have a tendency to talk fast as you probably already figured out. Um, but I'm going to try to resist that temptation um, and still be able to give you a good overview of Blueprint in, in seven minutes. Um, at its core, Tableau Blueprint is a methodology. It's a methodology for building the capabilities you need to create success, a successful data-driven organization. That's the definition at, at sort of the highest level. It's, it's how we have found people are successful in doing things. And then obviously from there, there's a lot of elements to it. But why do we even care about Blueprint? Why is this a thing? Why are we talking about Blueprint? Why, is, you know, why aren't we just out there kind of working on Tableau desktop and server and getting them installed and all that? Well, when we want to think about what we want to do, we, we sh should always take a step back. One of the things we do in Tableau all the time is we ask why. If see, somebody says, hey, we want to create a dashboard that looks like this, we might say, well, why do you want that information? Well, I'm trying to understand the uh, relationship between this and this. Okay, well, how do you use that information? We constantly ask why. It's no different with Blueprint. So we say we want to become a data-driven organization. That's good. I like that. That's, that sounds pretty good. But why do we want to do that? Well, we might say, you know what? As an organization, we want to prioritize facts over intuition. That's really where we want to go. OK, again, that, that sounds really good. Let's, let's take it one step deeper. You know, we want to find new business opportunities, right? Maybe that's your, your story. So why do we care about Blueprint? Well, yeah, we want to be a data-driven organization, but that has very specific manifestations for every organization that implements it. So if you haven't already seen it, I'd be surprised, but uh, this is the primary image of Blueprint. This is sort of the, um, what we call the subway stop model uh, that we're gonna look at. And this is really where we kind of define what Blueprint is. And there's detail behind every, all 11 sort of subway stops as well as each of the, the trusted and governed areas. So I'm gonna give a very brief overview, but, but just to kind of give you a spirit for what is included in Blueprint. It starts over there on the left-hand side with analytic strategy. So this is really a discovery process. This is about understanding what is it we're trying to do with analytics? Why are we on this journey? What are the things that we hope to accomplish? What are the business outcomes that we hope to achieve? What are the goals? Is it to get better information out to our partners? Is it to help enable uh, better research and development? What are the kind of the broad themes of what we are trying to accomplish with analytics? Starting to think through those from a strategic perspective, asking the, the why questions and the how questions and all that at, at a very basic level of what we're trying to achieve. And that will lay the groundwork for all the work that we're gonna do after the, after the fact. Truth be told, most people come into this sort of different. They may have implemented Tableau and then they had a few tactical questions they needed to answer, and then later they would go back and say, okay, well, let's think about this a little more broadly, a little more strategically. Maybe you started out one department had Tableau Server, and then you decided that, hey, more people needed this, and thinking through what we actually wanna do makes a ton of sense when we're trying to get this set up the right way. Right after that, we need to look at people. We need to understand uh, who's gonna be the executive sponsors behind this. How is this going to be important to their job? What roles are gonna be needed? Do we have the right people in place? Do we have the data stewards? Do we have the different roles that might be necessary to accomplish this? Who's going to be kind of on the team? Who's gonna lead the team? Those kinds of questions then are sort of laying the groundwork for each of the steps that we're gonna follow after that. So, so analytic strategy is generally use case driven. We generally say these are the kinds of things we wanna do. So we start writing down use cases and we start thinking through those use cases. And then once we have that, we can build kind of a, a personnel plan around that. Once we've done that, we can move into kind of the core of it, agility, proficiency, community, all under a trusted and governed pl platform. So 
What is agility? And again, I'm gonna summarize it at a really high level. It's making sure that we have a platform that is going to be able to support what it is that we're trying to do. So it's making sure that we have the IT resources in the right place, that we have the servers in the right place, that we can grow, that we can handle new use cases, that we have the ability to be flexible in terms of what we want to accomplish going forward with our analytic strategy. The, the old way of looking at this was always, it's sort of a, I get everything installed and then I can kind of go like this, right? Like the software is installed, the server is installed, call me if you need anything. And that really applied into kind of a, a, a static world where you know, you'd add a couple users and you'd you know, maybe add some RAM every once in a while. We're talking about a very different world where they constantly have to be monitoring, maintaining, and, and monitoring what, how my users are continuing to use this so they can be most effective. It's not that the, it requires any more maintenance, it's that we wanna be proactive in terms of how we're actually managing this environment. So agility is the word we use to describe all of those things. It really, it generally revolves around Tableau Server, right? It generally revolves around all the things that have to be in place to do that. In addition, we have proficiency, which is really how do we actually work with analytics? How well trained are our people? Do they know how to use Tableau Desktop? Do they know the visual analytics strategies? Could they build a good viz? Which power users are doing things and which, you know, where do we need to grow in that way? It includes education, uh, it includes learning paths, it includes a lot of things associated with becoming more proficient at actually using analytics within our organization. And it, it's, this is a good, I mean, all of this is a good place to be real honest with yourselves organizationally. Say, you know, we've got really four people in our company, and that's not unusual to say, who really know this stuff. Everybody else is an absolute beginner, that's okay, right? That's part of understanding where you are on the journey. And then finally, we have community. So community is really the area where we, I love that we're, I'm giving this talk at Tableau Conference because you get to see a great example of community, right? This is where we can kind of all get together and we're gonna talk about things that are important to our organizations of which Tableau is part of it. But we're gonna also be able to share stories about what's working, what's not working. Having that external community that you can go to where you can say, oh, how did you enable your users? How did you be able, to, you know, how did you overcome this problem is, is huge. Having that same sort of community internal to your organization is also important. Do I have a place where people can go to get additional support? Do I have a well thought out intranet page where they can go and understand what they need to do to get a Tableau license, for example? Or where they need to go to get more information? Um, do I participate in Tableau user groups outside of my company? Do I host them? Those kinds of things. All of those things really make a difference in terms of what our most successful customers do when they're implementing Tableau. So, the community piece of it has an internal component and an external component, and both of those are important. So you've seen the impact of a strong community because you're here today. Um, finally, trusted and governed. So governance is one of those things that has a, uh, probably a stigma attached to it. And, the, and the, the stigma is this, well, governance is that thing that locks everybody down and makes it hard to do stuff, right? And as you know, working in Tableau, Tableau is kind of a data to the people sort of company, right? It's like yeah, get all the data out there, right? But obviously, and Adam talked about this this morning, was the importance of you've got to do that in a way that makes sense. Um, you know, the, the code breakers had very specific buckets in which they could work, but within that bucket, they were able to freely share data. Those were their particular governance rules. I'm gonna give some particular examples of, of how this manifests itself, but you have to have those rules of the road. The example I like to give is if you put all of your data out there and just kind of threw it out into a, you know, a number of very large data sources with lots of different fields and said, okay, um, you know, users, there's business users, go at it, right, with no sort of metadata attached to it and no idea of what was, you know, have you enabled them? Well, in one sense you have, because all the data's out there. But in another sense, they have absolutely no confidence in anything they're going to be connecting to. They don't know necessarily when it was updated, they don't know if it's good data, they're not sure what the right data source is to answer a particular business problem. So if I do governance in the right way, it actually enables more people to be able to use Tableau Server to get the answers to their questions. So we're gonna talk about that balance, like how do I create um, the governance that I need without sort of overwhelming people with you know, rules of the road and those kinds of things. So trusted and governed is a theme that we'll run throughout the, uh, the, the blueprint and actually is one of the areas where we get a lot of questions and inquiries and how does this fit into my organization? So we'll spend a little bit of time talking about that specifically. Okay, did I do it? I don't know, seven minutes? Probably not. <laughs> Let's call it, it's, it was close enough. 
Uh, so that was my very quick uh, overview of, of Tableau Blueprint. Again, you really should get more information. There's lots of places you can do that. So for the, what I want to move to now is, th while that's important, we're really going to start looking at why uh, the context is important. And we're going to do this via an analogy. Um, and the analogy I want to use is primarily around um, a blueprint you would use for building a house or building a structure. The, the idea of doing that, there's a skill behind doing that. How do I, you know, how do I know how to design that? What do architects do? What, do the, what are the skills that they, they profess? And these are the, I listed seven here, these are principles of design. This has nothing to do with Tableau. These are sort of, if you go out and say, what are the principles of design, um, whether you're you know, building, uh, doing landscape architecture or actual buildings. Um, I've seen different lists, some are six, some are 10, but these generally seem to be the ones that, that most people agree are some of the important aspects of design. So we've got unity, balance and color, transition, line, proportion, and repetition. So these are great principles, and work, but just sort of knowing these obviously doesn't make you a designer. It's good to know that. What really is gonna matter is when you know how to apply those in context. So let's take our building example. Balance means that your house doesn't look lopsided, right? You, do, you don't wanna have necessarily a house that's perfectly symmetrical side to side, but it should be balanced. You should have good proportion to your house. It, it should relate well to the size of perhaps the other houses around it. The window size and the door size should be a certain relationship. There should be a number of windows spaced appropriately to give your eye a nice balance to it. The repetition of things like shapes and colors are important. Where do I put, the, where do I put landscaping? Where do I put trees? All of those things go into it. If I know the principles, that's good. What really matters, though, is I have to know how to apply those principles to the particular situation that I'm working with. That's what makes a good architect. A good architect knows how to apply the principles of design. So knowing the principles is important, but knowing how to apply them is really what we want to get at. So let's look at that from a blueprint perspective. Let's say that I had to build a house, and my, the thought was, you have a 50-foot wide urban lot to build your house on. This might be the right design for that particular context that I was working in, right? I don't have a lot of room to work with. It's going to be a single car garage. Um, I want to give it a little bit of you know, interest, so I'm going to put a you know, gable on there and, and kind of put the door back. So this would be the appropriate use of design in terms of balance, in terms of all of those things, for the context that I have, which is like you have a 50-foot wide lot to work with, right? You just don't have a whole lot of room across the lot to, to, to do what you want to do. If I had five acres, this might be the appropriate design. Right? This is going to, again, it uses all the same principles of design in terms of balance and flow and, and repetition and color and all those, but it's in a very, very different context. Let's say that I have this house, but maybe there's an interstate right behind this house. Right? Well, I have to think about that context, too. How am I going to adjust my design to account for the particular situation that I'm dealing with? So the design is important, but understanding the context of where we're trying to apply this makes all the difference. So in Blueprint, these are the six areas that we listed. But just sort of knowing that those are the six areas is good information. And if I read through the entire 197 pages of Tableau Blueprint, you would know a lot of good information about what some of the best practices are. But what's really going to make you a good architect, what's going to make you very successful, is knowing how to apply those into your context, your particular situation that you're facing right now. Um, do you have a small lot? Do you have five acres? What are, the, what are the strengths of your organization? What are your weaknesses? What are the areas where you've struggled? Understanding all of those things makes a difference in terms of how you're going to implement Blueprint. So let's consider two fictitious companies who might want to be implementing Blueprint. We'll start with the first one. I've nicknamed them Mega Industries. So Mega Industries has a, an executive team that is fully committed to an analytics-based strategy. That's kind of who they are at the... At the at the officer level. Um, the line managers are pretty comfortable with analytics. They understand its importance, its role. They're used to working with data. Um, the board recently approved a large capital expenditure that focuses on an investment in analytics. That's a, a part of the strategic plan for the next two to five years. HR trains people in using data. Uh, they hire with analytical capabilities in mind. And finally, the data. They've recently completed a major data consolidation project based on a cloud-based data warehouse. So almost all the op major operational systems now have data accessible to them 
in, their, in that particular environment. So that's mega industries. Now we're gonna look at mini industries. Mini industries is very interested in analytics because they like analytics because it provides some cool new dashboards with pie charts, lots of maps and dials and stuff, and also lots of color. So that's the direction that's been given from the uh, executive suite is that's, that's kind of why we're gonna, do, we're gonna do this Tableau thing. Line managers can mostly spell analytics, that's good. Uh, the board is trying to squeeze the IT budget to increase profitability. New hardware requests typically require six to nine months to approve and implement. HR is not aware of the importance of data analytics. Uh, most of the company's key data is in a 30-year-old COBOL-based system that is supported by the last two remaining members of the project team. That implemented the system in 1984. Data is available via daily batch updates and requests for pipe-delimited text files, right? Love it, yes. So you're in line and you're going, that's me, yeah. <laughs> you get the idea. So let's think about this. So, so the context, right, is absolutely key. Both of these organizations can implement Blueprint. The, 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 the principles that are contained in Blueprint apply to both of these organizations. We don't change anything in Blueprint. How we're going to do it, what are we actually gonna do on the ground, is gonna be very different. What things are we gonna emphasize? What things are we gonna you know, stress? Where are the areas we need to really focus? are gonna be completely different. And that's what I wanna th want get us to think about, is what are the contexts of our particular organization? What are the areas where this is gonna be very important for us? So I'm gonna look at some specific examples, but I wanna think always, in, you know, you're, hopefully none of you work for many industries, but I doubt many of you work for mega industries either, right? We're, we're all sort of somewhere in between. We've got some stuff that we do okay, um, but there's some stuff that, that, that could be better. So the reality is most of our organizations are somewhere in the middle. Um, some of us have really nailed aspects of Blueprint. I think if you, if you were to find out and take a, a, an, an assessment, you'd find out, you know, actually, we're pretty good at that, right? We, we've got that pretty well done. Most of our, for example, most of our people do know how to use Tableau Desktop well and how to build a good analytics. Now, we have no governance, but, you know, we, we, we can do that. So you'll find that there's things that you're already pretty good at and things that you struggle with. And that's really where an assessment can be useful. But the key is to understand our context and our organizational strengths. All right, so let's build. In this, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna continue to use this home building analogy because I think it really works so well. Your organization might be the equivalent of a 50 foot wide lot. You might be the equivalent of, of having five acres back into an interstate. You may have all kinds of design restrictions. But what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take some, look at some real practical examples of where this plays out, where I've actually seen this happen in, in customers who've tried to implement Blueprint and kind of struggle based on their organization. So first I'm gonna list what the, the blueprint principle is. So what I'm gonna, it's actually literally pulled it right out of blueprint, pasted it right into the slide. What does blueprint say about this particular area? Then we're gonna talk about what might be the context, like yeah, but, right? The, the part where it's like, oh, I don't really fit that because here's the problem that I have with my organization. And then we're gonna talk about some strategies to overcome what, you know, how do we get around that? How do we work through that? So a lot of these, I, I didn't pick these at random. I picked these kind of based on what we see a lot of, right? So these are or th pr pretty typical things. Um, you know, a few of you may recognize a few of these from your own organization. Um, but hopefully they'll give you an idea of, again, why, how we apply things in context. So let's dive in. First one we're gonna talk about is deployment. Um, Tableau Blueprint says this. Regardless of where you choose to de deploy Tableau Server, properly sized hardware is critical. Your planning should be aligned with evolving business needs by, accessing server, by assessing server utilization, user engagement more frequently, scaling more frequently, and changing topologies more frequently than other software applications. The whole idea of being able to be agile. Tableau Server tries to make it very easy to do that. You can do stuff in the cloud, you can do stuff on-prem, you can do things between server. There's a lot of you know, tools you have to do that. So, but this, this whole idea of agility is really key to deployment. Yeah, but what about, you know, this situation where there is just no money. I, I have no, no, there's no, I can't be agile when I cannot obtain any more hardware, right? How do I, how do I work through that situation? Until 2020, there's no additional hardware available for Tableau. That's my context, right? That's my, that's my world, that's where I'm living, that's what I have to deal with. So maybe this is your situation. The blue line is the number of cores you have dedicated to Tableau Server. The orange line is your planned user growth for the next year and a half. Right? That's, that's kind of what you're facing as a, maybe a Tableau administrator or implementer. You're looking at that and saying, yeah, that's pretty much what's gonna happen. How in the world am I gonna do that? What am I gonna, how am I gonna handle that particular uh, situation? 
So by analogy, this is like saying to a builder, okay, I want you to build a house, um, but yeah, there's a little bit of a problem with the lot that you might have to, um, you know, adjust your standard dimensions and your standard plans a little bit. And the builder says, oh, that's okay. I'm a, I'm a good architect, I can do that. Yeah, well, the lot kind of looks like this. <laughs> so, and I very much applaud whatever architect figured out how to put a house on a 10 foot wide lot in what looks like a parking lot, but they were able to do it. And so what does they have, they have to get creative, right? They have to understand this is what I have to work with. And so um, I'm still gonna build a house here. I'm gonna make some design decisions and some trade-offs that maybe would be not optimal, but it's going to allow me to accomplish what I need to accomplish. So just like the, the builder in these two examples, um, were able to kind of get creative and, and work with what they had to work with, that's what we have to do as what well, we're trying to look at implementing Tableau in a less than maybe optimal situation. The key in a severely restricted infrastructure is ruthless efficiency. How to do more with less. So here's some examples of how I can do some more with less. Uh, one, you're gonna tune, you may have to do more tuning. Uh, generally Tableau comes in a pretty well tuned environment. It works for the vast majority of people and you don't have to touch a lot of the things, a lot of the buttons. Um, you may find that based on your particular usage pro profile, you're really going to have to ruthlessly tune Tableau beyond what you might have to do in a standard environment just to be able to support the additional, the, the workloads that you have. Um, that may mean more, more frequent changes to your uh, deployment uh, profiles. Um, it may mean just constantly monitoring that to make sure that you are handling the load. But you, have to, you, you may have to spend more time actually working through monitoring your environment and making changes as, you need, as needed. I always tell people consider memory upgrades. This is kind of a cheat, but um, the, the cheapest way to buy more uh, efficiency or to buy more performance and capacity on a Tableau server is to buy more memory. You get to a point where diminishing returns, I get it, but generally if you can't buy more servers, that's always a trick I try to tell people to, to think about. Um, police your users and content. So we're gonna talk more about this later, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it, but there's a whole idea of if I have to be ruthlessly efficient, there are things that you're just not gonna be able to do on the Tableau server, right? That I have to be able to, to, to say, look, I know um, you cannot have 40% of the capacity of the box for your background or update. I'm sorry, that's not gonna work. We're gonna have to work on something else, some other way to do that. Or you're gonna have to do it once a week instead of twice a week, or the, you know, those kinds of things, looking at what the user activity is. And then finally, as Marie Kondo would say, we discard everything that does not spark joy in this case of Tableau, we offload anything that can be done elsewhere, right? So we look and we say, are there calculations that I'm doing in my, on my Tableau server that I could probably do in the data source? Are there things that I could do in Tableau desktop, um, which essentially would run on, on a local machine that I don't have to necessarily do on server? How can I maximize the efficiency of my particular machine based on the fact that I'm extremely capacity restrained? So these are just examples of some of the ways that we as architects, as, the, as people who are implementing software, have to get creative with what we've been handed, right? Hopefully in 2020 the restriction goes away and we're able to implement you know, in, in the way that we'd like again, but for now um, these might be the, the, kind of the rules of the road. All right, so that's, that's our, our first one is deployment. I'm gonna move on to analytics best practices. This is what Blueprint says about analytics best practices. Think not just as an analyst, but also as a designer and a consumer. Dashboards should have interactive elements that are discoverable and predictable. Follow a sensible logical layout, have a simplified design that makes complex decisions easier. I actually love this sentence because it's a really good, or a couple sentences, because it's a really good way to kind of sum up what good design in Tableau desktop looks like, right? How, what we're actually trying to get at. So this is, what Blueprint is trying to do, and this is really what as we're aspiring to. Well, yeah, that's fine, but um, my business analyst said it needs to look like this. <laughs> right? So, yeah, I know what you said about analytical design, visually pleasing, interactive, all that kind of stuff, I know that, but um, this is kind of what they asked for, and really, this is really what they like, right? I, I'm sure nobody's ever faced that issue before. <laughs> Um, so, okay, <laughs> we kind of go, okay, yeah. Um, and we think about, okay, what could we do, 
right? So how can we take the blueprint principles of interactive elements and all these things and visual, good visual design and sort of handle the restriction that we've been, we've been given? All right, so the first thing you have to remember, and I think we all kind of know this, is converting to a visual analysis paradigm is new for a lot of people, um, especially those who have used the existing view that we've used of data for a long time, Excel, right? It, 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 the history of that goes back so far, and that has been the way that people have consumed data for so long. We have to be aware and a little bit sensitive to the fact that that's kind of what people are used to, right? And we're really, this is a pretty big leap. This is not a little, oh, just get over it and start using visual stuff, right? It, it, it's, a big, it's a big deal. And I think sometimes, you know, we come to Tableau Conference and everybody's all rah-rah, but visual analysis and design, right? And we get back and we're like, why doesn't everybody feel this way in my organization, right? It's a little frustrating. So, but I, I think a little sensitivity is, is, is in order here, a little bit of like understanding about, yeah, this is kind of how they've worked with data for a long time. So here's my, let's go use a building analogy. Let's say that you have a, uh, your house and your, your banister is falling down. And so you say, well, you know what? I need to replace my banister. Uh, the wood banister that I had before is falling down. This is the one I saw in the catalog. I'm gonna get a, a banister that looks like this because you know what? It's kind of like, it's kind of like my old one. It's just newer and the, the, the spindles aren't rotting, right? So you might do this. You might decide to replace your old, old banister with the new banister that kind of looks like that one. Why? Because that's what you always have. But what does a good designer do? What does a good interior designer do? They go, you know, there's this thing now called metal. And you can get some really cool looking banisters that use metal spindles and have design and have all that. And you go, oh, I didn't even know that existed, right? Or I didn't even know that was a possibility. What a good designer does is opens you up to possibilities that maybe you didn't know about. So if your banister is a spreadsheet, you know, we have a very upgraded version of that. Um, but we have to let people know about it. And we have to let them know kind of what that looks like and, and how it works. Uh, you, the other place you might see it is if you, know, you go into a car dealership and you say, yeah, I'm looking at the, uh, the RL model. Well, you know, the, the GT model has everything you want plus, you know, this and this and this, right? Now, that's an upsell, I get it. But it's also a good person will show, that, look, that's a better fit for what you're trying to accomplish. Understanding this is what you actually need. I, I, know, I can understand your needs. This is how I can actually meet that need. So that's how it might work in the, uh, uh, in, in the, the home building world. This is how it might work in Tableau. So in this case, here is my Tableau. I actually created this in Tableau. Uh, it was painful, but I did it. Um, <laughs> This is what the, what the person asked for. And you'll notice up at the top I have two tabs, okay? So this, this is one of the tabs. If I go to the next tab, it looks like this. Same data, same information, shown visually, shown interactively, shown in a way that I could actually make some real business decisions that would act, might actually affect my organization. So this is a way that we can say, your wood banister is really nice, but let me show you something else that you might be interested in. And here's the other trick I do. Whenever I have it load, uh, I have it always load on this view first. <laughs> Just little, so what you've done is you've given them the security blanket. You've given them the safety. Oh, my data's still there. I can still get a spreadsheet, thank goodness. All I have to do is click on this tab. You haven't taken anything away from me, right? So th that's key, you haven't taken anything away from them. What you've done is you've given them um, a better way. And hopefully over time, they're going to spend more time on this and less time on that to the point where it actually gets to the point where they're like, yeah, I don't know that I really need that anymore, right? I'm not sure that I, I don't really use that view anymore. Um, and that's, that's actually a really interesting way to kind of analyze the, the changes in, in behavior of, of, of users over time. The, the, the other reason people sometimes you know, want the, that design is they're like, well, I'm gonna download it into Excel anyway. And it's like, well, then we got to, you know, then we have to have another discussion. Tell me why you're doing that. What are the things that you're trying to get out of that data? Are there ways that we can provide that to you in a, in a visual and interactive dashboard? Um, you know, I always say there, there is the one thing that this is good for is what we call looking up values. So if you want to know exactly uh, in 2012, what was our profit ratio for office supplies in February, and you want to look up that exact number, this is the best way to do it. Pretty much every other business question you want to ask, it's not the best way to do it. So we gotta get kind of people to that point of understanding, okay, what is it you really wanna do with the data and making sure that what we're doing will, will support that. 
All right, so again, a restriction that we've been given, we, you know, we know what Blueprint says, um, but we have a context that makes it difficult, so how do we work around that? All right, now let's look at one that, that revolves around data. Um, so this one says in a, in a self-service environment, the role of data governance is to permit access to data, to enable users to get the answers they need while ensuring that security is enforced. A real good summary of kind of some of the, the overall data governance piece um, that we have. Um, hammer and nails context, <laughs> there is no data warehouse. The data is everywhere and we are not sure what is reliable. <laughs> Real world. So, so this is always funny, like uh, uh, this happens sometimes where I'll, I'll go uh, meet with a customer and we'll have a bunch of people in a room, we'll be doing kind of higher level strategic work talks about what we're gonna do with data, like how we're gonna actually use Tableau. And um, you know, we'll have some good ideas about uh, just general ideas for dashboards and visualizations. And, and so then, like, at the end of the meeting, then, you know, kind of, like, the executives walk out, and there's, like, a couple IT people left in the room. They, like, you know, close the door, make sure nobody's listening. They're like, our data can't do any of that, right? <laughs> <laughs> our data is terrible. I'm like, trust, yeah, you're not the only one, right? So, so the, the, the bottom line is th there are very few organizations that have, like, you know, what mega industries have, right, where all their data is in one big, nice cloud-based data warehouse, and you can get to everything. Most people have some kind of mess in the data world. That's just... That's, that's real world, that's, that's kind of the way it works. So I wanna think about our building analogy again, and I wanna say, what if when I went to the building site and I was getting ready to frame the house, they go, oh, where's the wood for framing? Oh, there it is. <laughs> that big pile over there? Yeah, that's the wood that you need to use to frame the house. Okay, well, let's get going. Um, so what, what we're looking at is like, okay, I can do that, but it's going to be much more difficult, right? So it, it's just a process. I'm gonna work through it. One of the first things I might do is I say, you know what, I'm gonna organize some of that stuff. I'm gonna create some stacks. I'm gonna put the two by fours over here. I'm gonna put these, you know, these boards over here. I'm gonna create some, some areas. Again, analogous to what we're gonna do with our data. It's like, okay, I know we're starting out with a pile of data. We're gonna slowly over time start to organize that. Right? We're gonna kind of get it into the right areas, the right stacks, so we can start to work with it a little more efficiently. And then as that data gets easier and easier to work with, it's gonna make it much easier for me to do my, my framing. Now, it doesn't mean, I don't have to go and go through a two year process to get all my data nicely stacked everywhere to do that. It's just that I wanna work through this as, as part of the process. So if your data sources folder looks like this one, and if you look at the very bottom of the screen, it says, there is nothing here yet, <laughs> which is exactly what Tableau Server tells you if you don't have anything in your data sources folder. Um, this is where a lot of people start, right? This is where a lot of people begin their, their journey. Everything is maybe in a TWBX that's been published by different people in different places and there's no real data sources yet. Um, that's okay, right? That's the beginning of the journey. The thing to remember is if you have data everywhere and it's a mess, implementing Tableau is the start of making things better, right? It's not a silver bullet, it doesn't fix all your data problems but it is the, it's the start of the process of making things better, of starting to organize your stacks of wood into, little, into piles. And you're gonna start thinking about, okay, which data do I have? Which dashboard is it gonna be used in? How could I organize that data a little better? Where could I put it that I could share it? How can I create a shared data source instead of having everybody have their own copy of the spreadsheet? So this is interesting time and you're not gonna have it all done before you publish your first dashboard, but implementing Tableau is part of, part of that journey that's gonna make it better. Aim to publish new dashboard or new data sources just like you publish new dashboards. So you may say, okay, every two weeks we're gonna have some new dashboards out there, every month we're gonna have some new dashboards. Think in, about when could I publish, how many that data sources a quarter could I publish? You know, if I really put my mind to it, think of that as a metric that you wanna track, as something you wanna keep looking at. It doesn't have to be perfect. It has to be published, has to be usable, obviously. Um, but think about that as a way to, to measure kind of your, your growth. It's, I'm creating another stack of wood, right? This month I'm gonna create, this quarter I'm gonna create this stack of wood. Um, try to get the fields and schema right, even if the source will change later. I always say if you're, um, if you're like, hey, well this data's in Excel, but we're gonna convert it to a data warehouse, so I don't really wanna do anything with it. Well, you know what, I bet you when it's in the warehouse, the fields will probably look a lot like the column names that are in Excel. So see if you can get that right. And if it changes later to a database or, or a data lake or something like that, that's okay. So think about in terms of fields and schema, and if you can get that right, it'll make it a little easier as you move on. And then <clears throat> the last two. One is to think about appropriate security in Tableau Server, even if the source, same thing, if the, if the source right now is a spreadsheet, 
you still want to publish it into a folder that has the proper security structure that later will maybe turn into, again, a relational database or something like that. So you can start doing all the security and governance stuff now, um, regardless of what your data source actually is. The other thing I suggest is uh, decide how, what, okay, I've got this giant pile of wood. What steps do I want to take, right? Where do I start? Like, what are the things I do first? Um, chart your data. Chart your data on a viz and helps you identify data. So here's an example of what that might look like. Tableau visualization, where on the uh, right axis, or on, on the, uh, the value of the data is on the x-axis. The ease of access, how easy it is to get to, is on the y-axis. And every single one of my data sources has those two things. How easy is it to get to? How valuable is it to my organization? I can essentially plot, create, create a scatter plot for that, partic for that information. Put it on this, and, and actually create a viz. I mean, I've done this with customers, creating a viz that, that, that shows this. And then I'm gonna start up in that upper right-hand corner, say, look, this is the first, first couple things I'm gonna work at. And I'm gonna slowly make my way down into the, into the left over time. So having a kind of a methodology to it, right? Thinking about what I wanna do. Um, I, I think that the encouraging thing I try to tell people is don't worry, everybody's data to a certain extent is a mess, right? Tableau has pretty good data, but it's, you know, it's got issues, right? We, we have things that we have to work through and we're the data company. So everybody has data issues. And thinking about it sort of systematically and how you're gonna get better and better and better. And then starting to think about things like certifying data. Like, so once I get these things published, there's, you know, there's lots of things you can do in Tableau Server to like certify them. Um, all the stuff that they talked about this morning with like the data catalog, being able to say, I know where this data came from, I know when it was refreshed, I know, I mean that, makes a huge difference in terms of the usability of your data as you move forward. So take the first step, don't be afraid, don't worry about the fact that you don't have all the answers on, on day one. All right, so we're gonna talk about measurement. So measurement is an area, so this is what Blueprint says about measurement. As Tableau is deployed broadly across the organization to users of all skill levels, administrators need to ensure that the content that is being created and consumed is discoverable, fresh, and relevant to your audience. To accomplish this, administrators should measure the user engagement and adoption. That is a Tableau best practice. Continue to monitor how people are using the software, the, the, the things you've put out there, the content that you've put out there. So the, the normal ha hammer and nails context we see for this is, I don't have the ability to measure everything and keep up with it all. I have over 2,000 users and it's pretty much just me, right? I mean, that's a pretty common refrain, like how do I decide what, what to measure, what I wanna actually do? So let's go, let's go back to our home building analogy and think about the home inspector. So if any of you have ever bought or sold a house, you know the value or the importance of the, of the home inspector. The home inspector comes in and spends a few hours going through and if you are selling the house, the whole time the home inspector's there, you're thinking, oh, I hope he doesn't find this, right? Right, you're like, no, don't find that, don't find that. And if, the, uh, if you're buying the house, you want it to be as thorough, I mean, it's, I wanna know every little thing that is wrong with this house, right? What I'm always amazed at is you almost never can hide something from a good building inspector, right? They find it, right? And yet they have, think about all the different systems they've got to look at. You've got water, you've got uh, you know, sink and drainage, lot, base, I mean, there's just so many areas that they have to look at. Well, how do they do that, right? How do they know um, that two years ago I had squirrels living in my attic? Right? I thought I had them all cleaned up. Well, you know, they know where the squirrel droppings are, right? Let's face it, right? They, they know how to do that. They know the places to look to find those kinds of things. And that's what we have to do with measurement. We have to decide, okay, I can't look at everything, but I've gotta look at the most important things, the things that are really going to, to drive my, over, my, my measurement of my adoption. So these are some of the ones that I would say are the most common and probably the most useful. Your mileage may vary a little bit, but these are the ones that we t traditionally use. Date since last login, creating bins for daily, weekly, and monthly use. So understanding what percentage of my users log in every day, what percentage of them log in every week, what percentage of them log in every month, which percentage don't log in at all, right? That's a good sort of histogram to break down. Uh, most frequently reviewed content, and then I also put in there why. Why is that the most frequently reviewed content? Is it one person that hits it 42 times a day because it's constantly being updated? Or is there a whole department that's using it? Understanding where, where the engagement is coming from and why it's being done is really, really helpful to knowing how you can best serve your users and, and increase adoption. And look at your power users. What are they doing? What are they doing differently? Help understand how they're actually 
creating content or, or, or working with Tableau Server in a way um, that's, that's meaningful and has got them engaged. The other thing I, I tell Tableau administrators is uh, don't hog all the, 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 the data, right? Like, you've got all this data about all the things that are going on. There's probably people out in the organization who would love to have access to that, right? They, they may be department heads. They may be power users in a different department. Take the, the Postgres data for them, publish it out to them, and say, hey, look, you can now do your own analysis. They may do some of the work for you. Because it's actually, if you make it easy for them, it's very interesting. This is a classic teaching someone how to fish sort of example, right? You're gonna like, I'm gonna give you the Postgres data, I'm gonna make it real easy, I'm gonna show you how to do it, I might even create a vis or two for you, and then you can continue to monitor all the people in your department and find out what they're doing and how their user engagement's going. And oh, by the way, we can maybe get together once a month or once a quarter and talk about it. So actually you know, sharing the load, there's, there's some information, I put a, a link in there um, about Blueprint, uh, specifically about how to do that. Um, so you can actually kind of figure out how to build those views and create them and, and, and create an, on, an offline repository for that kind of information. So share the love, Tableau administrators, you know, share the data. All right, so these are some of the things I use days since last login, right, with the bins. Um, content ownership, right, create bins for, uh, uh, create the, show the usernames up top, sort it by like own workbooks or own projects. Certified data sources, understand who your power users are, understand you know, who are the people that are doing most of the work and what are they doing. All right, uh, well, let's move on. We've got two, uh, two more to hit. I think this, this one is on analytic strategy. So this is really about executive sponsorship. So what do you do when, I mean, the blueprint, it tells you the executive sponsors set the vision for modern analytics. They align projects to transform, transformational initiatives, nominate staff for project and advocacy roles, and ensure accountability. They will serve as a governing body for the use of Tableau. That's really the, what we're, Blueprint would say, that's really what we need to do. The context so often is, um, and this is kind of a, a, a amalgamated quote from things I've heard from people I've worked with is, you know, really when it comes down to it, they're just, the execs are just not that focused on the details of implementing analytics within my organization. Um, they want us to be a data-driven organization by next year, um, but there's just not a lot of, tactical focus on this. And that's, that's a pretty common sort of situation where, where we get into that. And what I try to tell people is, okay, imagine if you met with your builder and um, there's certain questions that if you are building a new house that you would want the builder to ask you that would be important for you to give input into, right? What kind of tile do you want or something? You know, those kinds of decisions. But we have to be really careful as people who implement Tableau um, to not put a burden on kind of the executives that they really shouldn't need to deal with, like more detail than they really need to know. So if somebody came to you, a builder came to you and said, okay, I'm, I get the, the caulk guys here today. Do you want them to caulk the master bath first or the guest bath? Right, you'd be like, what? I don't care, just get it done. Right, so, so and I think that's what we have to think about. When, when we're, what is it we need to discuss with our management teams? What are the key things? You have to understand that you're a culture change agent, right? That's part of what you're trying to accomplish. You're gonna to have to do things that maybe fit outside the, that area of responsibility. What are the non-negotiables? Is it budget? Is it training? Is it time frames? Do you need to have a you know, once a month meeting? Do you need to make sure that you have resources to do certain things? What are the things that you absolutely have to have the management team part of? And just focus on those kinds of things. Communicate more than you need to, even if it's a one-way communication. Even if you're just feeding weekly updates that you're not sure if anybody's reading, I encourage people to really do that to keep their executive teams focused on this. Sometimes it gets it to be a little bit of a lonely feeling like nobody's paying attention, right? Even when you're trying to implement some more time, sometimes it's sort of like, is anybody focused on this besides me? Um, but I think that's part of what, that tends to be a, a kind of a natural behavior and it doesn't necessarily mean that you're, um, you're not doing a good job and it also doesn't necessarily mean the organization isn't serious about what it's trying to get done. It's kind of just the reality of how these projects tend to work. All right, so we talked, about, um, we talked about measurement, also from monitoring. Without monitoring, a set it and forget it deployment can be met with inadequate resources that fail to support the workload of highly engaged users. So, so many things to monitor, so little time, right? What if, okay, I'm gonna switch analogies here and talk a little bit more about this is, because I think the car analogy works for this and, and for the discussion on governance. What if all those lights went on at once? So, the, right, I mean, it's like, I feel like I got so many things to, to, to monitor and so many things to watch in my tablet, you know, it's like, there's all these kinds of things going on. Well, certain ones of these lights would mean pull over right now, and other things of these lights like, eh, you know, no big deal, you can, yeah, you can drive with that, it's not, it's not gonna hurt you. So, 
we have to understand what are the important things. What are the things that require, require possibly, and really we need to monitor. Um, stale content does become an issue. Not, it's not an issue the first month you're using Tableau Server, but it becomes an issue pretty quick. Uh, backgrounder failures, backgrounder status. These are things we really need to look at because these can be resource drags if we're not very careful about it. We need to look at CPU and memory utilization, right? If we're not, if we're not monitoring that and people are starting to have bad experiences because the, the box is constantly maxed out, that's gonna be a big problem. I like dashboard response time because it's a proxy for a lot of other stuff that's going on. Um, we have this uh, strategy we call like create a canary in a coal mine. You set up a Tableau, desk, uh, a Tableau workbook and you run it at a certain time every day, right? And you track how long it takes, and it should be a little bit more complicated one. How long does that dashboard come return over time, right? And you try to run it at the same time, so you're, you take out that variable, because sometimes if you run something at 10 a.m., it takes a lot longer than if you do it at 10 p.m., right? But, so we try to take that out of there, and you do it with the same dashboard every single day, and you track it over time, and you start to see, okay, you know what? It appears that, yeah, certain days it's bad, but for the most part, my, my performance hasn't suffered in the last six months. So I've added hundreds of users, but I'm, I'm okay. Other times you're gonna find where I've really seen a serious decline in the performance or an increase in the time it takes to load. I wanna know about that. I really wanna know and, and I really wanna track that and make sure I stay out in front of it. So it's, that's why it's, you know, carrying a coal mine. It's warning me before something becomes really bad. And then this is another one I always tell people, ratio of minutes updating the backgrounder to access frequency, large is bad. So you've got updates that take four hours to update and people look at it twice a month. You know, and it's updating every day. Eh, it might be a problem. All right, last one is governance. So governance is central to Tableau Blueprint because it is governance that makes self-service possible. As the anchor point, governance will drive all decisions as the project team develops agility, proficiency, and community across the organization. So here's what people are facing when they think about governance. There's two kind of extremes that, that can be a problem. One is people love Tableau because it's self-service and easy to use. If I restrict it, nobody's going to use it. That's one fear. The other fear is if I don't put restrictive governance on Tableau, it's going to be chaos. So those are the kind of the, the two things I need to worry about. So Tableau has different governance models, right? And I won't go into these in detail. There's a whole section on this in the blueprint. One is centralized, one is delegated, and one is self-governed. So this kind of goes from the, the highly centralized model to one that kind of has the, the rules defined at a lower level to one that's completely kind of open and self-governing. And it's really important to know which of these models you want to apply in which particular situation. So if we look at our car analogy, on a highway like the Autobahn, governance is very, very strictly defined. The lanes are well-defined, thank goodness. The speed limit, even in this case, they have speed limits per lane, right? So there's some very specific governance and rules associated with this particular environment. And thank goodness, right? That is the appropriate governance model for the Autobahn. You wanna have that well-defined. You wanna know which lane trucks are gonna be in. You wanna know what the speed limit is based on the conditions. You wanna have different lanes potentially with different speeds. You wanna have very specific lane lines. You don't want people going in between lane lines. All that needs to be done is that in that environment. That is an appropriate governance model. This is a Jeep road in southwestern Colorado. Guess what, how much governance there is on this particular road? There is, there, is no, there is no speed limit sign. There is no sign at all other than the signs you see right here at the start of the road, which probably says engage your four-wheel drive. But you know, I would say that this is the appropriate governance model for this road. What if I put a lane line down the middle? I mean, there's not enough room to one car, right? It, what, what I'm saying, what we're saying is, when two cars meet, you guys work it out, right? That's right, that's, that's what they should do. If I, you know, what if I'm next to a cliff and I'm, and it's like, no, you, you know, you work it out. What's the speed limit? Work it out, figure it out. The governance model for this road is whatever the drivers kind of figure out between themselves. And I would say it's the absolute appropriate model. If you put the Audubon's governance model on this, it'd be a big problem. And if you put the Jeep Roads governance model on the Audubon, it really would be a problem, right? So that's what we want to do with Tableau Server. We want to have an Audubon area. So we might have, a, let's say, our marketing department. They've got certified projects. This is well-defined dashboards that have been vetted, that have been reviewed, that are updated on a regular basis. 
And we have certified data sources. We know exactly what's in that data source. We can talk about how often that data gets updated. It's used for all kinds of different reporting. I know exactly what's in there. I know where the data, where the data comes from. So I need to have that Audubon data source. But I also might need to have a Jeep road, right? I need to have an area where I can, I'm not quite sure if this data is right yet. I'm still kind of working with it, or it's very unstructured, or it's just kind of the latest stuff we got, we dumped out of Google Analytics, and we're kind of playing with it right now. I need to be able to explore things and try things and do different things with that data in an environment that doesn't force me into any kind of rigor. Um, my security might be different. It might just be things that I can look at. Right? I can collaborate differently. I can invite somebody to look at it, but maybe it, you know, other people can't see it. The, you know, if I want to update it, go ahead, update it all day. Right? It's, it's, those kinds of rules are not in place. So what makes good governance in Tableau is creating an environment where you understand where your Audubon is, you understand where your Jeep Road is, and you understand how to create a project structure that supports all of your different environment mo models. That where people get hung up is they think governance is this one size fits all thing that's going to restrict people to, you know, that it's, it, that it's just sort of the first thing. It's just the Audubon. It's not. We want to have appropriate governance. This is a model that, you know, actually it shows the flows. It's one of the things that um, uh, one of our consultants created this actually, and, and it's actually a really good way to kind of sum up governance uh, it, for a particular customer. It works for a lot of environments, I found, this particular model. So go ahead and steal that. Uh, okay, so last thing we're talking about, from, how do we get, how, where do we go from here? I told, I mean, Blueprint's 197 pages. Um, I think what we really wanted to focus on, though, is the importance of applying it in your particular situation. There's a lot of things you can do as a next step. Um, you can take an assessment out of the Blueprint part of the booth. Uh, you can chat with your results with different experts. You can seek out other people who are in your similar context. We have almost 80,000 customers, or over 80,000 customers, I should say. There's going to be people who are in a similar situation as you, who are facing the same kind of contextual issues that you're facing. So understanding and going out and sort of finding, you know, what is my context, understanding what that is, and then going out and, and talk, I mean, there's obviously, you know, we do that in professional services, we have partners that do that, uh, many of you have customer success managers that can help with that, uh, or technical account managers, other people within Tableau, and also just within this, this particular community as well. There are so many places you can go to kind of get help with, with what you're trying to do. All right, I've hit a lot of analogies, and I'm gonna end with a really weird one. This is my calculus book from my freshman year of engineering, uh, engineering calculus, math 120, or whatever it was. So why have I, I had to go find the screenshot of this. I think this is pretty much the same edition. This was several, <clears throat> several years ago that I was a calculus student. Uh, but I, I remember this textbook because it was one of the best textbooks I ever used to like learn something. In a, in a, and I remember like it had a lot of examples and all that kind of stuff. It was actually very, very useful. And you know, most of the things you could work out through the textbook. So it was one of the best textbooks I ever had. But guess what? I still went to class most of the time. Um, <laughs> I still met with my professor. I still met with my teaching assistant. I still got together with study groups and took practice exams. I still did a lot of other things besides use the textbook. The textbook was great. It, like I said, it was one of the best ones I've ever seen. But for me, the textbook was necessary, but not sufficient. I think as you look at, at Tableau Blueprint, you're gonna find that it is a great textbook. It offers you a lot of information that's really well thought out, and that we've put a lot of time and hours into making sure that we've curated it down. But I also think for many of you, you may find that you'll wanna go past that as you start to implement it into your specific situation. As a freshman student, I knew what my context was. I knew I needed more help in certain areas. I knew I had to seek out additional things. In your particular situation, there may be areas where you're like, yeah, that, I understand what Blueprint is, but I'm not quite sure how to do that in my company, in my organization. So that's, that's the Tableau journey that we're all on, is understanding our context and understanding how we can get there. So what I've tried to do is take 197 pages of Blueprint and give you a good idea of how to tackle some of the thorniest issues that we get. Um, your context is your context. Learning how to apply Blueprint in context is, is important. I wish you a great week of learning, uh, a little bit of fun, and all the best as you implement your Blueprint. Thank you very much.